Um, we see those two covenants. We see God working in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And our scripture opens up at in verse 36 in Acts 9. And I'm going to just walk through this verse because I want to take a really look at, at Dorcas this mm. morning. Okay. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which Greek was translated in the Greek was called Dorcas. This woman was abounding in deeds of kindness and charity, which she continually did. This lady in this busy, busy city continued to work for God. She was a disciple of God. And when we say the word disciple, that means that she was a follower. A follower follows Jesus. She was a follower, of, not herself, she followed Jesus. Yeah. And, and her life belonged to him. When you say, I'm a disciple, you mean you give your life away. You, you give yourself away. Yeah. She's like, okay, I'm a Christian. What does that mean? I'm a disciple. I follow yeah. Jesus. And that's what she did. She followed Jesus in this busy city with everything mm. going on. A lot like our lives. Everything is going on. But we still are called to follow Jesus. Yeah. Wow. No matter what is going on, no matter how much the culture changes, we don't change. Because right. the word doesn't change. We're still called right. to follow Jesus. And, and Dorcas was that kind of woman. The Bible calls her it, Tabitha, in translated, which means Dorcas. And it meant that it, it describes her beauty, her beauty, her physical characteristics. Dorcas means gazelle or animal, and it, it you know it's an animal. But those animals are graceful, right? You know, you see those women; they're just like elegant and graceful. You're like, man, I want to be like that. <laughs> How did she get so polished? Well, that's what the Word of God does. That's what being a disciple does. That what means that's giving right. yourself away. Mm -hmm. it, it polishes Polish. you, it refines you, and makes you be the woman of God that leaves an uh, impact on their community. She was abounding in deeds of kindness and charity. You could go to this woman if you had a need, and she would meet that need. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that just went to be with the Lord. We were friends for 30, 32 years. And one thing I take away from her life is she never would say no. Mm -hmm. You would ask her for something, and she would never say, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And I just really went after she died. I mean, my heart still grieves for her. But I'm like, you know, she never would say, I can't do it. How many times we say we can't do it? She literally Today. took, I'm here to serve you. Right. Serious. Yeah. I'm here to serve you, and I don't care what I have to do. So she would she would give what she needed to do to somebody else. So she could do what she wanted you to do, what she wanted her to do. And I'm like, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> she, she would call me and say, I need you to do this and this because she had to go do something for someone else. That's a woman that is abounding in, in deeds of kindness and charity. Not finding excuses like, how can I help? That's what God is calling us to do. That's, what, that's how Dorcas was. She was a woman that was looking to serve God all the time. She made herself available as a disciple like Jesus. He made himself available mm. to the disciples to walk with them. All those times they were with him all the time. All the time. Her kindness and compassion and charity overflowed in benevolence. And we need a church like that. Yeah. If we're going to love one another and serve one another mm -hmm. in the fear of God, we have to be willing to overflow with benevolence and kindness. Our lives have to be looked upon as just kind people at that church. We love you. That's what we want. And she was, the Bible said that she served continually. She was consistent. Mm. All the time. And that's a lot to say. Yeah. <laughs> to be consistent all the time. Yeah. It's like, are you for real? <laughs> you don't be that way all the time. But we, like I said, we know ladies that are like that. Some of our mothers are like that. Yeah. My mother was like that. She was consistent all the time. Never had a bad word to say about anybody. She loved God. And she was always the same. She wasn't moody, which is a challenge for us. <laughs> you know, we blame it on PMS. We blame it on all kind of stuff. But it's just sin. Do we need to step up? <laughs> it's just sin. Amen. Because Jesus walked with the disciples. All of a sudden, he was consistent. Yeah. And we're his disciples. So God's calling us to be consistent. If those areas... Like, like Mother prayed this morning, we have areas in our heart we need to pray about. That's yeah. what prayer yeah. breakfast heart is about. It's to check us and say, this is where I'm at and this is where I need to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Today is that day. That's what, that's what we're here for, to pray about those things and make change in our lives. <clears throat> Whatever we see Jesus doing, we're called to do. 
We're without an excuse. He died. He gave us his Holy Spirit. We're without an excuse. We go, well, I don't have to do that part. That's for somebody else to do. <laughs> The Bible says that in verse 37, and it happened at a time that she fell sick and died. And when they had washed her body, they laid her in the upper room. <coughs> Over a period of time, we all get that, you know, that time is coming yeah, when yeah, the Lord yeah. is going to call us home. Yeah, right. we, yeah, right. Our bodies are weak and feeble, and God calls us to that place. And until then, she labored. She served God. She didn't make any excuses. He just served God faithfully. Scripture doesn't uh, give um, an age, what age she was, but over a period of time, she became sick and she died. And it was customary that in those days that you would wash the body, you know, kind of what we do with embalming. Right. But the community would come together, those women that loved her, those women that, you know, wanted to be able to be a blessing to her because she had been a blessing to some, to them. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Yes. yes. You know, when you're getting ready to go home to be with the Lord, or when you're gone, the, the women of God come around you and just care for your body. That's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is beautiful. But you got to be able to leave an impact. Amen. Because some people will be like, oh, I'm so blessed. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, they said you want to have remarks. Anybody want to have two minute remarks? We're going to cut you to two minutes. <laughs> and nobody even comes up for a second. Yeah. Wow. You wonder what kind of life did she live? Mm -hmm. That's right. What kind of life? And, and that's really sad because our lives speak. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When they're not yes. Right. Yeah. When they're not speaking, we, we, we are showing what we believe, what we love yeah. without a word. Yes. People can see it. Mm. <clears throat> in, uh, even in her death, they looked up to her and they esteemed her and they loved and respected her. When I, um, we lived back, we were in Fresno now, we were gone for almost nine years. I grew up in Fresno. And my mother was a community leader. She was a faithful missionary. Before I even knew what missionaries was, my mother was a missionary to people in our community that didn't speak English. Um, the immigrants of the, at that time were Filipinos mm -hmm. and Chinese. And she would minister to them. And um, I didn't understand it. You know, when you're a teenager, you're kind of selfish, like, you know, you should be doing all that. <laughs> we poor, you know, just like them. You know, why aren't they coming to our house and bringing us cookies? Why do we have to go over there? And she would say, well, we, we were called to love them. And they may not speak our language, but everybody speaks one language. Yeah. It's universal. And it's love. And so we're called to love them. So now we're back in, that's why I'm just telling you a little bit about her life. We're in Fresno, and I run across some of her friends and um, or some of her friends' children that knew my mother. And it, it blesses me how they talk about the impact my mother had on their life. Yeah. Wow. Even though she is gone. Mm -hmm. Because even when you are gone to be with the Lord, yeah. if you've left an impact, yeah. you're still going to get some rewards for that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's why like dead people like Adrian Rogers and DJ Vernon McGee, that sermon still come on the radio. Yeah. They're still getting some <coughs> jewels. <laughs> people are still coming to Christ yeah. because of their lives. Yeah. That's why you want to leave an impact yeah. right. on the lives that are around you, on your children. They can look up and say, you know what? Grandma was consistent. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bootleg stuff going on in the church, but Grandma loves the Lord. <laughs> right. You know? right. And, you, and you know what? And your pastor. There's a lot of stuff going on, but our pastor loves the Lord. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's the kind of impact we want to leave. You think, well, you know, it don't really matter if I nip and dip or, you know, <laughs> do whatever I'm going to do. It doesn't. It's early. <laughs> it leaves an impact. Oh, yeah. It leaves an impact. People are watching. Dorcas was active a witness in the church. Our witness in the church is active. Mm -hmm. It's not to be inactive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. like that. In spite of her own life, you know how we make excuses. Well, I can't, you know, I can't do that. You know, Terry is our only day off. <laughs> <laughs> Nine o'clock in the morning. I, guess. <laughs> I can't do that. 